वेलकम बैक कमिंग टू एबनॉर्मल मोलिकुलर मासिस पार्ट टू वे वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सटेंड द थियोरटिकल लर्निंग इन ऑर्डर टू बी एबल टू हैंडल प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम्स एंड प्रैक्टिकल न्यूमेरिकल्स बेस्ड ऑन एबनॉर्मल मोलिकुलर मासिस कॉन्सेप्ट हियर वी आर गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस अ न्यू टर्म डिनोटेड बाई एल्फा कॉल्ड एज द डिग्री ऑफ डिसोसिएशन और एसोसिएशन इन सोल्यूशन how will we define alpha it is nothing but the ratio of the number of moles associated or dissociated in solution divided by the total number of moles in solution it is nothing but an expression to show how many moles have undergone association or dissociation this is the total number of moles in solution we are taking the first aspect that is association a very simple example of it we done ch3 cooh associating to form dimer you can have many other example this is the simplest that i am taking so that you are able to relate to it you are able to connect to it once the foundation is good enough then you can go ahead with even difficult uh, and more complicated uh, compounds and numericals and problems and in, in that case they no longer remain a problem so taking a cue from this here we got two moles of acetic acid associating we'll extend this concept to say that n moles of a particle are associating so you can have three moles four moles in order to form a polymer compound so an that means from n moles of a we are forming only one mole of the combined molecule so we start with first the initial number of moles that we take is 1 so initially we have not taken any moles of an so that's a zero at equilibrium that means after association has taken place and the equilibrium has stabilized now it is a dynamic equilibrium in that case the total number of moles of a left after association where alpha is our degree of association that means alpha is the number of moles of a which have undergone association to give us an is so we are left with only one minus alpha particles of a n moles of a are giving us one mole of an n moles of a giving us one mole of an therefore one mole of a will give us one by n moles of an so how many moles of an will be formed if alpha moles of a undergo association so we are simply using unitary method over here so alpha will give us 1 by n into alpha in other words the total number of particles that are now formed after association is 1 minus alpha particles of a and alpha by n particles of an so at equilibrium the total number of particles which are there in the solution are 1 minus alpha plus alpha by n iota that is van't hoff factor we had defined it earlier is the ratio of calculated molar mass divided by the experimental molar mass so iota van't hoff factor is 1 minus alpha plus alpha by n divided by 1 that means the actual number of particle divided by the number of particles originally taken basically saying your theoretical colligative property and the experimental colligative property because if you remember we had said that um molar mass and the colligative property are inversely related so this is related to your experimental property divided by the calculated property so this is your experimental number of particles and your calculated number of particles here if you notice now we'll stop over here we're not going to derive anything from here in the books and everything you'll get a lot of formulas personally i don't believe in giving too many formulas to the children once they understand the basics it should be easier for them to apply from here itself we will get three formulas one correlating iota to molar mass second
second correlating molar mass to the degree of dissociation that is alpha and third correlating iota that is van t hoff factor to the degree of dissociation so depending upon your requirement you can actually go ahead with calculating depending on what is the data provided to you you can easily go ahead and put these values or use this formula in your numericals without making it very complicated coming to dissociation breaking down for example we had talked about nacl breaking down to give you any positive and cl negative now here one mole of nacl is giving you two ions or in other words one molecule is breaking down into two we can have any generalization so what we've done is in order to calculate uh, generalize it we've said that a a molecule a is breaking down to give you n ions or n particles of b c d e whatever so we start with initial number of moles of a has one we don't have initially when we start the uh, reaction under uh, basic conditions we're saying that the number of ions are not there that means we've just added the solute to the solution at equilibrium equilibrium means after dissociation of a has taken place and there is a dynamic equilibrium between the molar form and the ionic form of the substance we have alpha that means 1 minus alpha is the number of particles of a left here alpha will be defined as degree of dissociation if you notice both the places we are using alpha only the term is alpha it is degree of association or degree of dissociation basically the fraction of the total number of particles which are undergoing association or dissociation so number of particles of a left is 1 minus alpha now one mole of a is giving you n moles of b therefore alpha moles of a will give you n alpha ions or particles so the total number of moles in solution at equilibrium will now come to 1 minus alpha plus n alpha iota again mc divided by me that is ex, uh, experimental colligative property divided by the calculated or the actual number of particles divided by the number of particles originally taken so i is equals to mc upon me notice over here association iota becomes less than 1 dissociation iota becomes greater than 1 iota remains the same here iota will be less than 1 again dissociation we have three formulas correlating iota to molar mass iota to degree of dissociation and masses to the degree of dissociation depending upon the numerical depending on the problem that is there you just have to list the values for the corresponding property or physical quantity given to you and then it becomes very very easy uh, you can see a write up on this and a few examples numerical examples on learning chemistry is fun where we have dealt with numericals based on the same and explain them step by step by so that it's easier for you to correlate to what has been taught over here hope this helps you to understand this concept a bit more clearly all the best